second attempt of giving this talk about the central world register of Danish. Um, lexicographic computational linguistic resources often lack compatibility or have challenging licenses. You all know that. You have something that don't share keys or where you don't have a completely free um, license or whatever, and it just gets too difficult to do anything with it. And that's a bigger problem for s smaller languages. For larger languages, there tends to be enough resources that is something you can use. Um, can you turn down this a bit because it gets the producers, um, it, it catches my voice when I'm too close to the speaker because it's too loud. Yeah, there's a feedback, yeah. Um, um, yeah. I think just because it's too loud, if you can turn, turn down the volume a wee bit, then it would prevent the feedback. Okay, I'll try to not, not to dig. It's just, I like cover this, or I get too close to that. We'll see. So in context of Danish, there are lots of electronic resources, but there are a unified resource, common identifiers, and good licensing terms. So what do we do about that? Well, our solution was to create a shared database key system similar to the Danish CPI system. And for those of you that don't know that, it's a, day, it's a key that every inhabitant of Denmark gets as a unique identifier. So it's your date of birth plus four digits. And it just means that all the diverse databases can talk to each other. So if I move to a different house, um, I just tell the council that I've moved and everywhere else will get this information. I don't need to go and tell my GP or the school where my kids are at or anything, anywhere else that we've moved. It's just automatic because you can all just send a push notification that ID number this and this has moved to, the, to such and such a place. It's very useful. Um, so what we're doing there is to do the same just for word. We then assign unique identification numbers to all lemmas and word forms in Danish. Oh yeah, that's a bit better. Yes, that's better, thank you. Yes. Um, and we launched the first the ver first version of a basic register, which I'll call CR1 in general. It's also been known as CRK, but there are other resources uh, within CR2. But the basic register was launched in September last year. And it's based on the official orthographic dictionary of Danish, Ratskuding Sorbonne, that we publish at the Danish Language Council. And that is official. Uh, you have to use that. Um, if you're, for instance, employed by the government, you have to, to, to follow that. And we uh, update it regularly. Every 10 to 15 years, we, we make a new, um, we change it slightly and so on. And it's, it is an orthographical dictionary. We do not consider semantic and etymology, for instance, when we define what a lemma is. Uh, so we have based CR1 on that. Um, and it can basically be seen as, uh, in, as an enhanced and optimized version for natural language processing. So there's some key differences. So we've designed CUR for computer programs, while programs while the dictionary is designed for humans. I mean, that's true even for the XML. Um, underlying the dictionary is still is very much focused on presentation. Um, CUR has, has many more inflected forms. Um, it can be used without any restrictions. You're welcome to, to download it and use for any purpose whatsoever, including publishing a dictionary. Uh, the dictionary, our dictionary, contains usage, usage examples and references to the rule appendix, which the CUR does not. Um, and the dictionary has more and longer clauses. In CUR, we only have clauses to dis to, say to disambiguate um, words that are not disambiguated by the inflection patterns. So, so um, we assign uh, IDs to all lemmas and 
and the forms. So the lemma ID is a five-digit number in CR1 and then a three-digit grammatical code. And I'll show this an example that because we have to do this quickly. And, and an additional two-digit code for of a graphical variation. And ID numbers are arbitrary and are not assigned alphabetically because we didn't want to be in a situation where we change the orthography or or how to alphabetize something, and suddenly the numbers were out of sync or something. So they're just arbitrary. Uh, between zero and 99,991, but, oops, sorry, just, and divided by what class? So the nouns are last, for instance, and so on. That's the only system there is in it, but that's not a demand, it's just, we've just done it for practicality. And here's an example. And here's an example. Um, taking donuts, which is a borrowing from English, um, and it has been assigned 97,230. And you see that here. You see that here. The first bit is the ID number, the lemma ID. Here you can see the lemma. It then, it then if you take the first form, it says there what it is. SB is a noun, FK is common gender, SG is singular, U, uh, UBEST is indefinite. Um, and there are two allowed spellings of that donut without the UGH and one with. And they're both perfectly acceptable in Danish. So the one and two, and 110 corresponds to this abbreviation. It's a one-to-one. -one. So you don't really need this column. It's just there to help you. 110 identifies that form. And 111 is the same, just definite. So you have donutten and donutten. Um, and the one at the end is um, for... Uh, to say well as part of uh, to say well as part of the uh, as a part of the official norm, but basically means well has been proofread. We have also generated some extra forms, and without having had time to proofread them, so there are a couple of forms, for instance, some comparatives and superlatives that haven't been checked. So they have a zero there, so you know to be a bit careful about using them until we get until we check them and then change it to a one. Um, and other CUR resources should adhere to a similar syntax. So an abbreviation, sign with CUR, and then some more, I'll get back to that. Then a lemma ID and any subdivisions. But you don't need to do it the way we've done in the basic resource. I mean, where we split in, split by grammatical code. If you did an etymological dictionary, you might want to split by etymological um, um, source, and so source and, and so on. It's entirely up to you. The only thing is that you should publish what um, what it means, and we provide space for that. Um, um, then relations is something that's not used in the basic register. Is something we are, have put in place for new resources coming in uh, that facilitate. Um, you know, together. linking different resources and together, and there could be many things. Example, this is just an example, instance, but for instance, for some of these are based on what we are needing for our historical dictionaries, which we are planning to add. I mean, previous orthographical dictionaries. So, if some two things have been fused or split up and so on, we need to be able to have some links. I can take, talk more about that in future years because at the moment we've only published the basic register, which doesn't use this. So this is work in progress, but there'll be something coming later this year, I think. Um, then the resource landscape. Level one is what you've seen now. Level two is for resources published by professional language in environments in Denmark such as uh, the Center for Language Technology um, at Copenhagen University and the Society for Literature. Um, what do you call yourself in English? Um, DSL in English, language and literature, isn't it? Yeah, the Society for Danish Language and Literature, for instance. Uh, they're working on a resource just now. Um, and they'll basically name CUA dot something. And then anybody else can also get, I mean, anybody in this room can just write to me and you'll get a sequence of numbers and a name that you can, uh, where you, that you can use and that's CR open and, uh, and then the name you want. And then you get some, a, a series of unique ID numbers that is yours forever.
uh, but it should be used in combination with existing ones. So if you're defining donut, you should use the existing donut ID if it means the same and so on. I mean, if, if it makes sense for you to use it. But if you have a new lemma, for instance, that isn't in zero one, one of course you should use your own. Um, so that's what I just said. And um, the, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, the size of the language literature and the CST are working on a semantic extension. They're not saying anything about it at this conference, but uh, there are people here from both of these institutions, so you can, I'm sure you can ask about, ask them about that during the break, which will eventually be made available in the usual place, or you said you call. Um, another thing I'm not going to talk much about is CYL linkers, which is basically like a grammatical target just for assigning CYL IDs to a text. Uh, one of my colleagues is working on a project called Clink that will do this automatically. So you just get it, give it a text and you get uh, and you assign CYL one IDs to every word in the text. It's in beta testing just now. So there's more in the article, but, um, but I think my colleague Peter will publish something soon about it. We'll see. And then here's some examples of how you can then utilize the CUR. Um, we have, and that's something we've had for years, we have something called the Rohist or um, Orthographical Dictionary History, um, which is the search engine for comparing orthographical dictionaries back to 1872. So basically you put in a word and you can see how it was meant to be spelled at different points in time. Um, and we are adding more and more resources to it. It's not complete at all. We don't even have all the dictionaries back to 1872, only some of them, and some of them are missing in entries and so on. So we're growing it all the time. We're hoping to go back all the way to 1777, which was the uh, first of graphical text published for Danish, which wasn't a dictionary, so we have to make a dictionary out of it first. And um, so what we're going to do then is to assign CR numbers in the, on level two to all the historical dictionaries. Um, and that means that you reuse the number. So if you take a word like Fos, which has changed the spelling quite a bit, that was before 2001, I think, and that was before 1948. Yeah, 48, I think. Um, they'll all keep the same number. So it'd be a very easy database to look up to display the differences, whereas today it's a much more complex system. And of course, that will be make publicly available to um, and it make it much easier to search things. So, how do you access this? You can download the entire register as a CSV file from orgis.co. Uh, yeah, if you should use an English name perhaps, hard to say in the middle of an English sentence. But you can also um, just use it online. There's a search interface online, and you can also access it from a program in CSV or JSON format. For instance, if you have a, a uh, in Python, if you have an ID number, you could just basically access it like that and then find out what it is and so on. So this would be donut if you if you add if ID is a number for donut we just saw before. And um, yeah and this is so we're, we're hoping it becomes a large crowdsourced resource in the end with many people adding more resources. I mean I'm talking to a physician at the moment who's talking about adding CR numbers to his, to his uh, um, dictionary of Danish and IPA um, and and so on and so on. And I know there are other people working on CR linkers. And of course, there's a semantic extension that I talked about earlier and so on. So hopefully become a whole forest of resources that are all sharing the same ID so they can be used very easily together. And we hope people will publish at the MLS and work against the decor. Uh, so it's easy to see who has data for what. And, oh, sorry. Uh, we hope many will release these things and make it available. You don't need to publish your resources. So long as you publish the lemma list, we are happy. If you want to have some data that's not public, that's okay too. But we hope everybody who gets assigned an ID range will at least tell us which lemmas they've defined. 
Um, and yeah, this is Mandy component and development and that's really what I said. So we're getting towards the end. So this whole thing was was funded by the Danish Digitalization Agency and we've been working together with uh, the Society of Danish Language and Literature and the Center for Language and Technology on this project where we've been doing the basic register mainly and they've been focusing on semantic extension and I've been working with colleagues for this, of course. Okay, any questions? Thank you, Thomas Wiedmann. We don't have a chair for the session, but uh, we can still take the questions if there are any. Maybe I missed, uh, but what is the size of, of the, uh, this uh, project, meaning what number of lemmas do you have? We've got about 65,000 lemmas in the basic register um, at the moment, but of course that would be, yeah. We already have, have one extension published that adds another I think it's 25,000 lemmas and so on. So we're close to about, we're getting close to about 100,000 lemmas being defined in the CY at the moment. Um, but we, we have all the inflected forms in the basic, basic register too. So I've, I should have looked this, I should have written this down, but I think it's more than 500,000 forms that are defined. So, but it will grow over time. It's not an impressively large lemma list at the moment, but the whole idea is to have a way where it can grow organically over time and where people start using the same ideas for everything instead of, of living in their own wee world. That's what we're hoping. Any more questions? Okay, if there are no questions, so let's uh, thank our speaker once again.